In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take regular old candy wrappers or potato chip bag wrappers and make them into a very usable zipper pouch. Not only will it be usable, but it will last for a very, very long time. You will be able to clean it regularly with just a simple wipe. Now, how do I do that? Well, you're going to have to stick around to find out. Hi friends, Tracy here from The Sewing Channel. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. In my last tutorial, I showed you how to make these adorable zipper box pouches where you could keep your loose change in, you could keep a mask in to make sure that you always had one. Some of you wanted to know if you could use contact paper instead of Pellon heat laminate to make your zippered box pouches. Well, I didn't have a very good answer for you. So I went out and I got some contact paper and I tried it. But this time I tried it on some candy wrappers. What better way to laminate candy wrappers and then turn them into little zipper pouches and clip them to our children's backpacks so when they go to school, they have their money in here. They might have a mask in here for the day. Whatever the case, they have it with them always. Does the contact paper work better than the Pellon? I don't think so. Now, if you're not going to sew on the contact paper, then that might be a good choice. But the Pellon for sewing wins hands down. No matter if you're laminating your fabric like we did in the last tutorial, or if you're laminating candy wrappers like today's tutorial. If you missed my last tutorial where I made this cute zipper box pouch, click the link above so that you can get all caught up. <laughs> I'm not gonna eat this, I promise you. Now in today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make this super cute round pouch. Now I did use the contact paper and I did sew it. Honestly, the, the heat laminate would have been way better because this makes too big of holes and it wants to skip a little bit. And so I do not like the contact paper for this project. For another project, yes. For this one, no. Let's have some fun today down in the comments. Out of all these candies that you see right here, I want you to go ahead and take a guess and let me know what you think my favorite candy is out of all these that are sitting here. Sour Patch Kids, Peanut m and M, Skittles, Twix. Stick around to the end to know the answer to that question. Oh my word, enough talking already. Let's get busy. Be sure to think about who you are going to give this particular zipper pouch to. Make sure it's their favorite candy. For my round pouch, I wanted both sides to be really colorful and have the term Sour Patch Kids on them. So I went ahead and grabbed two of these at the store. Cut off each end and then cut down the seam of the package. After you've cut them and opened them all up, you're going to get a towel, a wet towel, and you're going to clean these off really good because we don't want any sticky candy left inside of there once we put our laminate on it. With a round Tupperware lid and a Sharpie marker that can be erased easily, you're going to go ahead and trace the circle on your candy wrapper. Because my lid is clear, I can see through the wrapper and I can fussy cut exactly what I would like in the circle. With some scissors, go ahead and cut around that circle that you just made. Here I'm just wiping them down again and erasing the dry erase marker that I put on there. So I already have my piece of contact paper already cut and it's bigger than my circle. And then I'm just going to lay it right on top and press out any bubbles with my hands. And you see I'm just letting it stick right to my mat. And then I'm going to peel it up and then I'm going to place my other piece of pre-cut contact paper onto the back of one of the pieces of the candy wrappers. Next, we are going to laminate the other piece of our pouch, being sure to laminate with the contact paper the front and the back. 
The next step is to go ahead and follow with your scissors right along the edge of that circle, being sure to cut all that clear excess out. You should end up with two laminated pieces just like this. Now we need to figure out where are we going to place our zipper? In between the letters, the words, which way, slanted, you know. So in the end, I decide to go up and down on this piece. So once you decide where you want it, go ahead and fold it right in half to where that zipper is going to follow along. And then once you have your crease, you're going to go ahead and take your ruler and your rotary cutter and just slice it right down the middle. Now we're going to take some quarter inch double sided tape and we are going to go ahead and put it on the one side of that pouch. And then you're going to take and place your zipper face down just like you see me do right there. And then I'm going to press it into place and it's not going to move anywhere. Take it over to the sewing machine and about an eighth of an inch, quarter inch in, you're going to sew straight down. And then you're going to have something that looks like this. And then right at your sewing machine, you're going to go ahead and fold that back so we can do a top stitch right here. Fold that zipper area, you're looking at the back, so you're going to fold it toward the back. Just go ahead and finger press that crease in there and then just top stitch right down the about an eighth of an inch or so and pop a clip in there though if you need to to help you hold that down and then just sew straight down. You should have something that looks just like this. And there's a look at the back. Now let's grab the double sided tape and go ahead and put it on the other half of the piece right on the edge there and then with the zipper facing down you're going to make sure that your sides match up so that it's even and you're going to go ahead and press that in place and then we're going to stitch right down about an eighth of an inch or so in or a quarter of an inch. Now we're going to do the same on this side that we did on the other side. We're going to kind of press that over so that we can put a top stitch in, crease it real good with your fingers and then we're going to top stitch all the way straight down. As you can see, our cute little pouch is finally taking its shape. This is why I love having a larger zipper than what my project actually is, because I'm able to maneuver the zipper tape just where I want it. Here I'm folding back the zipper tails with a couple pieces of double-sided tape. That is going to help hold those back so I can just put a little temporary stitch right in the ends there so that it keeps those tails out of the way. So when I go to zip my pouch, when it's all done, it's going to be nicely tucked away and hidden. At this point, make sure that your zipper tab is pulled about three quarters of the way open on your zipper tape, and then you're going to pop a pin in the zipper tape area. Once you decide which way you want the other side of your pouch to point, like which way the Sour Patch Kids says Sour Patch Kids, if that makes sense. <laughs> Figure out how that goes and then position it with right sides together in the position that you want it. Being sure that your zipper toggle, again, is inside of the pouch and not on those outer edges where the zipper tapes are hanging off. So go ahead and put a bunch of clips in there just like you see me do here and just go around and just sew in a circle and be sure to backstitch. And I do reinforce over top of the zipper tape. Now, since my zipper tape is polyester and plastic, it will not hurt my needle at all. So I won't break a needle. Now, if it was metal, it would, and I would not be sewing over it. But in this case, I don't have to worry about it. Once that's all sewn, you're going to go ahead and cut all the excess off of the entire circle, including those zipper tapes and any extra plastic there on the end. Um, go ahead and take all that bulk out of there. Now I'm going to turn it right side out. And once I finger press everything out and I push all the rounded edges out, I'm going to put a top stitch 
all around the very edge of that round circle, only about an eighth of an inch. Now I don't show that on the video, but that's what I did. Just because I love this lime green color of the zipper, I'm going to go ahead and take that excess of the zipper and make a zipper pull out of it. So you're just going to cut it down to what you want it to be size wise in length and you're going to feed it through the little hole on the zipper pull and then you're going to sew a straight stitch right along so that it stays on there. If you guessed peanut M&M's, you'd be right on target. Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care.